Hi everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So I have here some gray tin. What this is, is, is an allotrope of tin, which is actually kind of a non-metallic form, where it's elemental, but it converted from the white tin, the metallic form that's all bendy, to this form, which is very brittle and kind of acts like a ceramic, has large crystals and slightly more expanded and a dark gray color. Now I finally managed to make this after over five years of having a piece of tin in the fridge. Just ask my mom. Uh, she tried to throw this thing away several times. What it was was a piece of tin that I actually made in my high school chemistry class. We uh, electrolyzed a solution of uh, stannous chloride to make tin crystals. It was quite a fun little experiment. And I saved some of the crystals, I melted them down, made me a little splatter of tin, and I put that in the freezer and just kept it in there for as long as I could. When I moved out of my parents' house, I took it with me, as along with some of my other experiments that I had in the freezer. And it didn't seem like it was ever going to do anything, but you know, I'd check on it every now and then. And actually, a few weeks ago, I looked at it, and the corner of the tin had actually changed color. I'm like, this might actually be doing it. So I kept watching it for longer, and I took a picture of it every few days, and I noticed that the the grayness was actually expanding and it was accelerating, it was going faster and faster. And so I took some pictures of it, I'll put a slideshow in here. That shows the progression of the advancement of the conversion of the gray tint. See, once it started, it happened fairly quickly. So, now that I have it actually, I could put this with another sample of tin and actually make more gray tin very easily because it's like a seed. Now the tin has to be very pure. Uh, if it's got any aluminum or copper or anything mixed in with it, it'll stop its conversion. But I should be able to make some pure tin again. So let's make an ingot of pure tin, add this to it, and see if we can get it to convert much quicker. And if I can, then I'm going to see if I can make it go back. Sound good? So here we are with the uh, better camera, as you can see. And I've got a jar of stannous chloride. The uh, label's kind of faded because it's an old jar, but it's still good. Got some uh, very pure stannous chloride in here. So I'm going to put this inside of this jar. Yeah, I may as well do all of it. There's not very much left. And uh, I'm going to mix in some distilled water, which I have over here. And I have some platinum electrodes going into it. You can see here some platinum wire. There's a shorter wire over here. Those are hooked to this uh, DC electrical source, which I'll plug in once I get the solution in. And uh, the electricity will reduce the tin, making metallic tin at this electrode, of course, be growing a huge tree of tin crystals. It'll look rather pretty. That's why I've got this uh, time-lapse camera here. So I'll mix this up and let's get going. There it is. So it ran overnight, and I imagine I got most of the tin converted into a metallic form. At least uh, most of the stuff at the top by the looks of it seems to have depleted it at the surface more. Here we are. I just washed the tin really well in some pure water, and now I'm letting it dry. I'm going to put it inside this ramekin, inside of a toaster oven set for 450 degrees. Now I'm not going to use a metal melting dish because metal might actually contaminate the tin and ruin everything that I've uh, worked for here. Okay, so after melting it down, here's my tin ingot. This is uh, hopefully some very, very pure tin. Uh, there was quite a bit of uh, dross that didn't melt down. I think it's actually oxidized tin because it was so finely divided. It was easily oxidized. But uh, I think this is enough for my experiment. You can see here I've carved into it uh, Cody's lab. I, next to it is some of the gray tin. And this over here, that's not gray tin. Uh, this is just like tin that's been oxidized a little bit. Uh, it is gray, but this is not actually metallic tin. It's a, a compound. But uh, this over here, which is a lighter gray, is actually pure tin still. 
And uh, this is white tin, and hopefully I can turn this into this. Let me go get some dry ice, let's find out. Theoretically, at this temperature, and with a piece of uh, gray tin to initiate it, it should only take you know a few hours to start seeing the tin uh, start to turn gray. So here it is, all fully converted into gray tin. It's expanded quite significantly, yeah? It's incredibly brittle. I think I can actually break this apart and crush it into powder with my fingers, see that? As promised, I'm gonna heat this up and turn it, at least a small part of it, back into metallic tin. It's doing something there. It's like jumping around. And that's not even hot enough to melt tin yet. Yeah, I think it's definitely turning back into metallic tin. In fact, some of this has been oxidizing. But yeah, look at that. We got some pure tin here. <laughs> Converts back to metallic tin much faster than it did the other way. Okay, let's uh, dump it out right there. There we go. Now that it's metallic tin, it should have its metallic properties back. And indeed it does. It's now all bendy and flexible now. And shiny. Now that was fun. So I think I've actually come up with a application for this gray tin. So you, let's get some of this out of here and crush it up into a very fine powder. See now basically I have elemental tin, but an incredibly fine powder. And it's pretty easy to do. See that? Now any application where you need metallic tin in a very fine powder, bam, you've got it. Another thing I just noticed is when you smash it flat, the gray tin actually becomes white again. I wonder if it's actually turning into metallic tin due to the pressure. I guess that would make it so you wouldn't be able to create any kind of motor off of this effect. You know, the expansion of it. That's too bad. <laughs> Remember how I'm using a piece of metallic tin inside of hydrochloric acid to produce a stannous chloride for testing for gold? Well, if I use the powdered tin that I just made and put it into some hydrochloric acid, this will dissolve into it much more quickly and produce the stannous chloride much faster because of the increased surface area. Let's take a piece out and I'm actually gonna put this out someplace warm, probably in the windowsill or something, and I'm going to see if it will ever actually turn back into metallic tin. Obviously it probably should, but what will it actually do? I don't know. How long it'll take? I don't know. So I'm going to find out. Probably not going to be any results of that in this video though. There, it can live on top of this rock next to the potato. So here it is, my little baggy of product which took me over five years to make. Admittedly, I could have done a lot better if I would have had more pure tin, because I think when we were doing the uh, electrolysis of the stannous chloride to make the tin back in chemistry class in high school, we used uh, paper clips as the electrode, and that probably contaminated the tin with some uh, zinc and iron, and that slowed down the conversion process. And also, the freezer is not really cold enough. You need temperatures like negative 30 to get it started. and. Uh, you know, when your freezer is like negative 10 if you have a really good freezer. And I certainly didn't. But it appears that if you wait long enough, it will eventually convert. <laughs> and when I repeated the process to use the electrolysis, you'll notice, you'll remember I used platinum electrodes that didn't contaminate the tin at all. Also, I used dry ice, which is negative 109 Fahrenheit, which is plenty cold enough to start the conversion of the tin. In fact, it might be a little bit too cold because I think once you get to a certain point, the uh, conversion rate slows down. I'll have to test that with some liquid nitrogen, but uh, I definitely put the tin away from the dry ice a little bit so it's slightly warmer. And it seems to have worked. It's one of my longest running experiments that I've had come to completion. And uh, I'm super excited. In fact, my friend Arthur, who is my roommate in college, 
is also super excited about this because you know, he remembers it in the freezer in our apartment. He's pretty into chemistry and he's making a video about grade 10 as well. He'll probably go into more in depth about the actually how this happens than I will. So if you want to see that, go ahead and pop on over to his channel. I'll put a link in the description. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.